Hi folks, so this is going to be a quick overview of RAID and what it provides in terms of redundancy protection for failed disks and it can also provide some speed improvements. So uh, RAID array basically allows you to have a group of hard drives and when you've got a program on a computer running uh, and it looks at the disk, it just looks like a normal file system as though it's writing the same way as it would to a single disk but actually what's happening is being saved uh, across multiple disks and the RAID array um, or RAID originally um, was an acronym for a redundant array of inexpensive disks but uh, obviously commercial interests at uh, heart, they decided that it wasn't good for people to think that it should be cheap, so they've, they've decided that we should all call it redundant array of independent disks. Um, and the idea is if one disk fails, you don't lose all the information. So one of the first decisions that you need to make with RAID is whether to use hardware or software based RAID. Uh, if you use hardware-based RAID, you've got a RAID controller, like a physical uh, device that uh, you hard drives plug into, and then that presents to the computer as an interface to access it. Um, and the, typically there's a, a proprietary data layout, so that means that if you have a damaged controller, then you can't get the files except by getting an, a replacement controller with the same chipset essentially that you want to have the same controller um, so that you can get access to your files again so that kind of does introduce a single point of failure um, although to be honest it probably fails less often than a hard drive would and uh, hardware um, the primary advantage being that it, it gives good performance because there's no extra work for the the actual CPU to do, for example, because the, the hardware controller is doing the extra processing that's involved. Software-based RAID uh, basically does it within the operating system. So the operating system, um, well in either case the operating system knows, but in this case the operating system is a lot more involved because it's doing the work to actually store the information across multiple hard drives. So uh, often it's a it's a driver that's happening usually in kernel space that's doing the work and um, that means that there's a tiny bit of extra work for the operating system to do but it is a minimal amount of additional processing compared to you know what is really involved um, with modern computers it's not a huge amount of extra work uh, it, one of the advantages is you can add partitions to RAID arrays so you, you don't just have the option of partitioning entire, uh, having a RAID array of entire disks, but you can actually partition up each hard drive and then have a partition across different hard drives that are all part of a little RAID array across those partitions, for example. You can do all kinds of weird and wonderful things. Um, you can't usually dual boot um, because each operating system has a different data layout. So the way that Linux will do the RAID, handle RAID arrays will be different to the way that Windows handles software-based RAID arrays. Um, and depending on the details, you can't usually boot directly from RAID. So the way that you usually get around that is you've got a separate hard drive that has the boot partition, and then you've got your RAID array that's separate to that. Uh, this firmware-based RAID, which is software-based but with some support from hard, hard drive, um, which means there are drivers that are required to make use of the array. Uh, the processing is happening in the software, but not in the controller. Um, but it can do things like allow the BIOS to report on the status of the RAID array. So you might say it's the worst of both worlds because you rely on the hardware. You've got the same hardware dependency you had with the hardware-based array, array, but it's still doing all the host-based um, processing. But one of the advantages is like when you turn your computer on it shows you a status of what all your hard drives are at when the you know as the computer's starting in a nice easy to see view whereas one of the other disadvantages of software based RAID arrays is it can be quite hard to like you know you have to monitor to notice that something's wrong in the first place 
and then figuring out which hard drives you're supposed to replace is a bit more difficult than on a hardware one where it might have a light on each hard drive and it just comes up when you have to replace the hard drive instead of trying to track down which hard drives failed. Um, so there are different levels of RAID and depending on the level um, they there are different features that are used. So there's data striping which is where you've got um, sequential data and you segment it and place it across disks. So if you have the, the word hello there and you are storing that in tiny little fragments across disks, you might have the word hello on one disk and the word there on the next disk. So when you're trying to access it, it can actually pull from both disks at once and you get hello there a lot faster than if you were reading off a single disk, for example. Um, so data striping is primarily gives us uh, speed improvements. Parity is uh, adds error detection and for RAID what that means is error, it provides error correction so you can reconstruct using the parity bit so basically if you've got information stored across some disks uh, you use um, the part of that is a parity so that if one of these disks fail, you can use these disks plus the parity to re rebuild the one that's lost. And mirroring is where you just have multiple disks that contain the same data. So these are the RAID levels. RAID 0 is where you have striping but no redundancy. So you literally um, just make things faster. Uh, if you use RAID 0 and one of your disks die, then you've just lost everything. So it's probably a bad idea because disks do die. So don't do that. RAID 1 is just mirroring. So you've literally got two hard drives is usually the way RAID 1 works. And as you write to one, it just writes to the other one at the same time. So you've just got two copies of everything. Um, and so if one hard drive fails, you've still got all of your stuff. RAID 3 is with striping and with a dedicated parity disk. Um, so that means that you've got one disk that is just full of parity information so that if one of the other disks or if any of the disks fail you can rebuild from the parity or rebuild the parity from the data. Uh, RAID 5 is like 3 but the parity is stored along with the data across all the disks so it gets striped across um, and so the parity bit will be on a different disk. Like, depending. Um, that is the most popular configuration for a RAID array um, and it will recover from one failed disk. So if you've got five disks and one fails you can get you can you don't lose any information. If you lose two disks you lose everything. So when a disk does fail you want to replace it and rebuild it you know, straight away. RAID 6 is like 5 but with two parity blocks which means that you can recover from two failed drives. So instead of having, if you've got five disks, you could have um, parity, parity, store, 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 and then um, you know, and then if you're kind of alternating it might, the next piece of information might be store, parity, parity, store, store. Uh, but the information is stored across all those disks and because you've got two parity bits, if you lose any two hard drives you can get all the information back. So when a disk fails, you replace the disk and rebuild its contents. And a hot spare is when you've got an extra disk that doesn't get used until there's a failure, and it can automatically rebuild onto the spare. So you basically plug an extra hard drive in and say, well, when things go wrong, you can use this one to build onto. So it can save um, in that time critical time when something's failed, it will start fixing things by itself. But you still need to um, detect that that's happened so that you can take out the broken one as well and replace it with another hot spare, for example. Because of the way that all of that works is that um, basically if you've got RAID 1, you've just got, um, you know, you've got two hard drives with the capacity of one. With RAID 3, you've got the capacity is however many hard drives you have minus one because one's storing parity information. So if you've got four hard drives, then with RAID 3, you've got the capacity of 3. Uh, with RAID 3, with 4 hard drives, you've got the capacity of 3 hard drives. 
If you've got five hard drives, you've got the capacity of four. With RAID 6, because you're storing two parity bits, you have the capacity of uh, however many hard drives minus two. So you need, if you had five disks, you've only got the capacity of three. So that's one of the things to consider um, when you're deciding what kind of um, like level to use. And so here's an example where we have a RAID 5 um, with a hot spare. So you can see there's the information stored um, across the disks. And you've got a hot spare in place uh, just in case so that it can rebuild the information onto the hot spare. You can see here there's um, the parity is stored across all the disks. Um, and yeah, so that's that's an overview of how <coughs> of how RAID works. Um, what it gives you is basically the ability to recover from a lost hard drive. It's not a backup solution. If you delete your files, they're gone from all of the hard drives. Um, backup is a separate problem to redundancy. What this is is an ability to um, not lose all your information when you have a hard drive, hardware failure. Um, and it's important that you don't get that confused with the idea of having a backup, which is where you have another copy somewhere else, so that when you, all your hard drives fail, um, or you just accidentally delete off a hard drive, you can get the information back.